hey, it's Friday, time to talk a book. Let's dive right in to Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Pun intended or not is up to your imagination. But this is actually interesting on many levels. There's a lot to dig into with this book and I'm excited to talk about all of that. But before we get into that, I've been seeing some discourse and only surface level discourse, but I have seen some discourse particularly about TikTok and books being popular on TikTok and how that may or may not be changing acquisitions and the landscape of acquisitions and whether that means that it's going to be harder to publish quieter novels. And I think that that is a much more deep layered nuanced discussion for sure. And I think that there are always going to be books that are easier to market and to find a wider audience. And part of marketing and publicity is helping a book find its audience. So I think that there always is going to be a little bit extra layer for quiet novels. But I don't think that these platforms in and of themselves are excluding quieter, more reflective novels because this book I saw on TikTok months ago and it wasn't out in the US yet. I actually tried to pick it up on Indie Bookstore Day and it wasn't out and I picked it up immediately when it came out and I first saw it on TikTok and this is undoubtedly a quieter novel. It is a reflective novel. It is a still novel but it is a very active stillness. The stillness is something that we are pushing against in the narrative. We can feel the narrative being contained. We can feel these characters being contained sometimes very literally by a setting or a surrounding or their feelings. There is a lot going on here but it is not particularly an active novel and yet I saw it all over TikTok. So what is this novel? Let's jump right in. So Our Wives Under the Sea follow two women in the aftermath of a research expedition gone wrong. Leah is supposed to be gone for three weeks I believe on this research expedition and she as a marine biologist has been on many such expeditions before. Her wife Miri has no reason to believe that this will be anything different but it is and the points of view go back and forth so we both see Miri trying to get to know this new woman in many ways that she's married to that has come back from this expedition and we also see what has happened on this expedition from Leah's point of view. And there is an element of horror to both points of view and I think that the horror element of this has really been talked up and I want to say that I think it is a much different kind of horror. It is very much about the tension but this isn't like I said a very active novel. So that tension is kind of about seeing how long it can be sustained as well. There is definitely an element of body horror in Leah coming back and the changes Mary is seeing. This idea that she is lingering in the bathtub longer and longer every day, that she's drinking salt water. And personally I was very interested in what went wrong on this submarine. We see them go down, we see the comms go off, the cabin go dark, and then it's nothing. And there is very much this sense of aloneness and a sense that this is not a technical malfunction. That there is some intent behind this failure. So when I talked in the July anticipated about this feeling to me a little bit like the undersea version of Meg Howery's The Wanderers, I definitely got that because it felt like there was something bigger going on whether we were going to get answers or not. And in this kind of like open, reflective, tense type of novel, I am not necessarily anticipating answers at the end. But the way that all of that is handled I think is pivotal to the story and I think that that is a large part of what is at play here. When you are building something so tense and with a central question, whether it be the thematic questions or the just what happen, what is going on of the matter, there has to be some tightness to that resolution. Whether that's a resolution that's a little bit more open-ended or one that kind of ties everything up in a neat little bow. And with a narrative like this, I'm going to be honest, I prefer the more open-ended resolution. So we'll swing back to the resolution and how I think things were handled. But ultimately here we have a very subtle, quiet novel that is exploring grief and the unknown. And like I said, the action in here is 
a little bit more subtle. It is a stiller novel. That being said, it's also very short and it's very tight. And I think with something of this nature, you have to really focus in and tighten to make it work. And I think that this is a very intentional, thoughtful piece that really utilizes its space. So while it's not necessarily active, we don't feel like we're mired in blank space. And I think part of the trick of something like this is the tension itself. You have to be able to maintain that tension, to build that tension, to keep your reader invested in both what is going on with Leah as she's back, what is going to happen to her, what is gonna to happen to her and Miri, but also what happened to her in that submarine. And as a reader, I think that that is one of the more interesting questions because it's one of the more active pieces. We want those answers, especially as we're living in the after. But even there, the narrative is a little bit quieter. It focuses more on like the psychological aspects of these three people being in this space together and the idea of not knowing what is going on and being contained. And this is mirrored in the more contemporary timeline with Miri as well. And there is a really beautiful parallelism to these timelines. So for instance, the obvious in your submarine, you're contained, you're trapped, but the apartment in Miri's timeline, in Miri's point of view, also feels very contained and trapped. And in Leah's timeline, it talks about this unknown noise that's going on outside and what it is, and it's kind of pervasive, but unknown. And in Miri's point of view, we have these upstairs neighbors that we never see that just leave the television on at basically full blast all the time. And Leah is the only one who has met these neighbors. So this idea that Leah is really the only one with the answers in a lot of the scenarios in this book, but in Miri's point of view, she's also very disconnected and off limits. She is not functioning. She is talking into the distance and just kind of spouting these science facts that also feel like stories. And there's very much an element of how she used these narratives to kind of get herself through the containment of this failed expedition and this idea that she was talking to Miri on some level the whole time. And yet when they're reconnected, there is a barrier between them and they are unable to communicate. And so this parallelism really helps with the atmosphere and the tone. And the atmosphere and the tone are so important to this because they help build that tension and that intention behind the tension, which is so important. And the tension is really, like I said, delicate. It kind of sits on a precipice because you want to keep building it and the structure of the piece itself separated into different layers as if you're going undersea, the different layers of undersea. And the layers are explained by Leah in her narrative and they match that structure. And so there's a very much an intention there. And by breaking it up that way, it's a five act structure of sorts, which implies a building tension that we have to keep moving and ramping up, which we do to some degree, but I think it's a much more restrained tension than you might go in expecting. And to a certain extent, the tension is also built by the stillness because there is something uncomfortable about sitting in that stillness as a reader. It is disquieting. It's easier to put the reader on edge. That being said, I don't know that the tension got as far or to the point that I thought it was gonna get to, or maybe it's just that it didn't release the tension in the way that I was expecting. And so there was that reversal of expectation there. But all of this is utilized too, to get the reader to sit in that tension and sit in that unknown and that stillness. We're given just enough to care, but not enough to get real answers. And I think some of this unknown, these disconcerting moments are where the novel really shines, especially in Mary's point of view, this reoccurring imagery of her trying to call and get through to the center this mundane task, this really frustrating task from a day-to-day -day standpoint, just trying to get through to someone on the phone, is given this little extra tinge of uncertainty and discomfort. And the leaning into the unknown, exploring the unknown, processing the unknown. One of my favorite bits 
was exploring some of these message boards that Mary was lurking on while Leah was away. This message board that was basically a role play of women whose husbands were lost in space. And this parallel of space versus the sea, this idea that we know even less about the sea than space in some ways, which I feel like is reiterated in the cultural consciousness a lot. But here we have this idea that we don't know what's going on right beneath our feet. And so to see that parallel there. And then she's also involved in a message board for missing persons and those left behind. And so it's all about that unresolved, that open question. And even when Leah comes back, there are still open questions. There is still this sense of the unresolved. Something is still not right. And the narrative really excels, the voice, the tone, really excels in this tightness, this constraint that is mirrored in the setting. Everything works together and is really working in tandem, complements each other. You can tell that there is a lot of thought going into every piece and the writing is really stunning. It's gorgeous. There were times it could have slipped into purple prose but I don't think it did because there was such an intention behind everything being said and we have that imagery and that symbolism of what's under the surface. So we've got Leah very literally going under the surface and then we're diving in the more contemporary point of view and Mary's point of view into the under the surface of their relationship, their psyche. And so it's all about that unknown and the under the surface. And one of the ways I think the sense of the unknown is really being explored or questioned within the narrative itself is the way the book kind of sets superstition and science up against one another and not in a way where they feel in conflict with one another but in a way where it's like how do we as humans try to find answers to what we don't understand. To be fair though I don't know that it always finds the balance with this because I think there are very different rules for me as a reader depending on whether it's science or superstition. And there is throughout this idea that they are so similar. The lines are blurred. The novel opens with the deep sea is a haunted house which is phenomenal but I think there is to a certain extent different rules of what my suspension of disbelief is depending on how we navigate this. I'm willing to look into that gray area. I actually want to explore that gray area but I kind of need to know where we're sitting. Like are we setting up these potential superstitious events and then reversing it and being like oh it was science? Are we going the other way and like setting it up for us to expect there to be a scientific explanation to everything and then it's actually superstition, something larger, something different. I'm interested in the reversal of expectations regardless but I feel like it never really struck that balance of where it had me as a reader and where that reversal happened if it happened and the way things were kind of resolved, explained, it still felt open-ended but I actually feel like they were resolved to a certain extent more than I anticipated and I don't know if that resolution worked for me. It almost felt like we got too many answers for what had been established. I didn't mind living in that unknown as long as we were kind of wrapped up tight in it as well. If the questions being posed were resolved in a satisfying way and it felt like we had kind of written ourselves into a corner a little bit and we had to go somewhere. There had to be some answer to this catastrophe or there had to be something on the outside in a way that I don't know that there had to be. I think that there are definitely ways where we can get answers and it feels satisfying. I don't know if the answer we got felt satisfying. I don't know what to do with that resolution and the resolution in Leah's point of view in particular. The resolution surrounding the submarine and what was going on down there and all of the questions that were posed within this stillness and this silent kind of psychological breaking of these characters. As they were hearing these noises, one of them was hearing voices, Leah kept questioning why they weren't seeing anything on the outside, why none of these kind of odd blobby spineless sea creatures that live in the depths had 
floated past their vision. It felt like this very removed contained space to the point where sometimes I was like, are they even under sea? And I think part of that too is the rest of the novel felt so tight. And I think that that is a feat in and of itself because like I said, it is a very quiet, still, largely inactive, reflective novel. So to keep it that tight, to make us feel like we're moving towards something even when the action of the novel isn't really there is a feat, I think. But then it becomes the challenge of when your whole narrative is sitting and exploring the unknown, how do you end that? What's the resolution there? And because we're sitting in that unknown that after, we often feel a little bit at a distance from the narrative, but not in a way where it feels like it keeps me out of the narrative, if that makes sense. I don't feel like I'm reading through a fog. I still feel very in the piece, but we are kind of at one arm's length from these characters. We get a sense that they are moving through a fog for sure. And so even though the tension is still building through the novel, it is a quieter tension. And so the sense of catharsis looks much different. Maybe that's it for me. Maybe I feel like the novel is attempting to give us a moment of catharsis that I think actually works against the rest of the text. I'm not sure. I think that the ending is very delicate and difficult and I think it succeeds in a lot of ways and there are other places where for me it just personally didn't succeed but I think that everything leading up to it is really really masterful and interesting and gorgeous especially in the voice of the piece. There's also some really striking imagery and not just from the horror side of things but from like the kind of mundane day-to-day -day things and how it feels like we're looking at them through a little bit of a warped lens and how they can become a little bit more sinister so quickly. So yeah, I think that this is a really unique book. I think it looks at grief and the way grief changes us, the way trauma changes us in a really interesting way. I think it looks at layers of complexity in both the world and in the human condition in a really interesting way. And it has a really beautiful voice that makes these points in really striking prose while having parallels in its points of view that help emphasize everything going on. I think it's just a very smart, smart novel. I think it is either really going to work for a reader or it's not going to work. If you read this, I would be very, very interested to hear your thoughts. I think that there is a lot to dig into with this one. There is a lot of complexity. There is a lot to talk about for sure, but I found it a really, really compelling reading experience. So if you've read this, let me know what you thought. Thanks for hanging out. Read something good and yeah.